We begin on page 79 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join in the chanting of the Venite found in the front section of your hymnal, number S3. be seated. The psalm for this morning's service is number 112, found on page 755 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will recite it responsively by the half verse. Alleluia! Happy are they who fear the Lord. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. Wealth and riches will be in their house. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. It is good for them to be generous in lending. 
for they will never be shaken. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is established and will not shrink. Until they, see their desire upon their they have given freely to the poor. And their the wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. A reading from Isaiah chapter 42, beginning at the fifth verse. <clears throat> Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, who, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its towns lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Salah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The word of the Lord. Please join me in offering Canticle 13, which is found on page 90 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will offer it in unison. <clears throat> glory to you, Lord God of our fathers, you are worthy of praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated on the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. <clears throat> Those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. And they spoke the word to no one except Jews. <clears throat> but among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called 
Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, one of them named Agabus stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that, according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now, in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. Please join me in offering Canticle 19, which is found on page 94 of the Book of Common Prayer. We will offer it in unison. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel appointed for today is recorded by St. Matthew, chapter 10, beginning at the seventh verse. <clears throat> Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff. For laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, Find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. This is the word of the Lord.
brought this bully here. Are you trying to end everything we're doing? But Barnabas vouches for Saul. And he says, this is someone with whom God is working. And so St. Barnabas teaches us that even when we have been wronged, even when we are faced with bullies, there is always room for a second chance. Okay? Well, well we can get into that later. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Creator, we give you thanks for the example of St. Barnabas, and for our children, both those who are here with us and those who are absent this Sunday. Fill us all with the same forgiving love and send us out with the gift of second chances. Amen. Amen. You ready for some Sunday school? Yeah. Okay. The third chance, the seventh chance, or even the 77th chance is uh, from another part of the gospel. <laughs> we bless you, God of seed and harvest, and we bless each other, that the beauty of this world and the love that created it might be expressed through our lives and be a blessing to others now and always. Amen. Some of you are going to breathe a sigh of relief with what I'm about to say. This is a shorter homily. <clears throat> I will say that this week has been a very, very strange week. <laughs> so please forgive me ahead of time for the brevity that I am giving to our patron saint, Barnabas. Today, we celebrate the transferred feast of St. Barnabas. It's actually tomorrow, but of the we'll church. celebrate it today. This church, well, not this specific one, but our church, was dedicated to him when it was founded in approximately 1887 as a circuit church visited by a parson out of St. Mark's, Wairika, which just up the road a spell. There is something that seems a bit organic about that relationship because in the primary symbology of St. Barnabas, we see Barnabas himself holding the Gospel of Mark. And now we carry, sitting as close together as COVID protocol would allow, but still, adjusting our hearing aids so that we could hopefully catch what was being said. Isn't that right, Hap? What? <laughs> In these musings, it hit me. A patronal festival is a celebration not only of the saint, but also of the life of the church, our community, and life together as a family of Christian pilgrims, always moving. Group of Christian pilgrims. And we remember all these things. We remember all the people who came before. We remember the histories that created of us what we are today. And we remember those who over the years contributed and strengthened our church's mission, whose dedication and prayer have helped forge bonds of friendship, encouraged those new to faith, supported the clergy, and even those who came to find their vocation in this place. And all of this remembering 
I told you, it's been a weird week. My brain has been super active this week. All of this remembering made me feel invigorated as I thought of what we have accomplished together, as well as the things that we are accomplishing now. Meeting housing needs for a mill fire survivor. Spending time getting to know our neighbors at their church's 98th anniversary. Being the prominent house of worship at the community Memorial Day observance. And looking for ways to better work with our community to give hope and home to those who claim Christ but don't fit anywhere else. It also reminded me of how glad I was on coming here years ago. Not as many years as some, but years ago. <clears throat> to be serving a church dedicated to a saint who played a pivotal role in the early church's formation and evangelism. A saint who, like us, did not know Christ during Christ's earthly life. But is nevertheless loved and appreciated in the cloud of witnesses. But away from us and back to Barnabas. His parents named him Joseph. Barnabas was a name that was probably given him by the other apostles. It means son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. Tells us something about him and how he was seen by the other early Christians. In the Acts of the Apostles, he is described as a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. He was generous and shared what he had with the other apostles. We are told in another reading from the book of Acts in chapter 4, there was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. And later, after the reading that we had this morning, in the Jerusalem Council's letter to the Gentiles, chapter 15, we read, Along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, here we have it. Barnabas' ministry is spreading the gospel of Christ. And it was recognized and appreciated by those who had actually walked with Christ on those dusty roads so long ago. The son of encouragement was responsible for helping to establish the early church and brought many people to faith in Christ. A fitting saint to whom to dedicate this church. A church built when the population and economy of Siskiyou County was growing. Times were changing and challenging. Well, we are living in changing and challenging times ourselves. We don't know how life will change as we face new difficulties be they economic, social, societal, medical, or even climatological. We don't know how things will adjust in the years to come. We wonder, we wonder what faces our church. How will, how will we know what our church is? in the future. Will we hold on with a death grip to 1887 in Dunsmuir on the side of a hill in a railroad town? We've already lost that. How will we look as we maintain our relevance into the future? Not knowing this causes anxiety. However, we do know that Christ's message of love and faithfulness both divine and human love and faithfulness will endure through all ages to come. It's up to us to make sure that we take that step as Barnabas did 
and carry it to those who have not or could not previously hear. And so, like St. Barnabas himself, the resources from which we will need to draw include endurance, faithfulness, wisdom, a spirit of generosity of both our time and money. Our patron festival is a great time to take stock, to look again at those people, St. Mark's, St. John's, St. Barnabas, of course, all saints, St. Paul's, all angels, St. Andrew's, to look at these people who came before us and built this church, built this church as an effective lighthouse, showing the way to the lost and the fallen while encouraging the faithful. In general, in general, patronal festivals are about looking at where we are, right here, right now. Looking at the small things as well as the big things. Small things mount up one upon another, each one a small step advancing God's kingdom on earth. And St. Barnabas certainly knew about that. But here we are. We became a church. We continue becoming a church, nurturing and helping our members to grow. Nurturing and helping members to grow sounds a lot like our historical St. Barnabas, doesn't it? Barna, the historical Barnabas' specialty was sending out new disciples to further encourage and strengthen others in faith. And when I was musing on the St. Barnabas days that I remembered, it came to mind the year. Picture this with me, if you will. What came to mind while I am thinking about the St. Barnabas days that we have celebrated together, what came to mind was the year when we had three postulants, applicants, or discerning candidates going forward to train for holy orders. Holy orders, the diaconate and the priesthood. St. Barnabas was their sending church, just like the church in Antioch. St. Barnabas and Saul. Now, can anybody else remember that year? I'm sorry? It's this year! <laughs> I would certainly hope that we remember this part of our history. We are active. We are living in the footsteps of the historical Barnabas. We are carrying the word in love and light and creating an anchorage, a safe place for those who wish to approach Christ and do not know how. And we are here with open arms. Do we have to sit back and try to remember our glory days? Or are we doing great things right here, right now? Only you can answer that question. Looking forward, because at some point some, this is going to happen to somebody. All right, looking forward. In the ordination service for the priesthood, there's a command to the newly ordained priest to watch for the signs of God's new creation. This charges the priest to be the eyes and ears of the community that longs for God and desires to usher in God's kingdom. In the parables, what Jesus told us about the kingdom focused mostly on the small things. Salt, mustard seeds, pinches of yeast. That is how the kingdom comes. Small steps, small revelations of the love of God. And it is incumbent upon each of us to always look for the little things the little things that provide proof that God is good all the time and, oh, come on, somebody knows the rest of that line. All the time God is good 
As Christ says to his disciples in this morning's gospel reading, go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Christ chose St. Barnabas as he has chosen all of us. Christ has chosen those that will bear fruit, that will last. That is the blessing that St. Barnabas the saint and St. Barnabas the church has given to the world and the people in our corner of the state of California. And now I say to you, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and together let us proclaim the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will continue with suffrages A found on the bottom of page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can be safe. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have the prayers of the people. Rejoicing in God's providential care for us, let us offer our petitions and intercessions to God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christ's church throughout the world, particularly our own Episcopal Church and our presiding Bishop Michael, for the Episcopal the Diocese of, the of the Shepherd Northern by Coast. the Sea in Walala. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord we pray for our sister congregation, All Saints Beckingham, and the Reverend Christine Goldsmith, our rector. For this we pray to you, Lord. As we honor our patron saint, St. Barnabas, we pray for the strength and fortitude to further the gospel message in our own time. Lord Christ, help us emulate your life of inclusion and self-sacrifice. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who have heard and answered the call to be clergy and ministers of your church. Bless them and protect them in their vocation. Show them ever new ways to serve you in both active ministry and retirement. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims and families of the deadly train crash in Odisha, India. Lord, grant peace to those who have died in this tragic accident. We mourn with those who have lost their dear ones, and we pray for the healing of many who have been injured. For this, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those discerning a call to ministry in your church, particularly our own Mark DeBelka, Camille DeBelka, and Don Wallace. For this, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in trouble, need, sorrow, sickness, or any other adversity particularly those on our congregation's prayer list and any others you may now name, either silently or aloud. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all your many blessings, particularly any in which we may now name, either silently or aloud. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have departed this life, in particular any which we may now name, either silently or aloud. For this we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the laying on of hands for healing.
rise as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Let us offer a sign of the peace to each other. Our offertory hymn is number 324. General Thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation 
preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. We continue with the prayer of St. Chrysostom on page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be there in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for a just peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war and peace, that wisdom, discernment, and compassion would guide all their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Our recessional hymn is number 708. 